one of the other things I love about winter fishing, you know, you can wake up at 10 o'clock, get to the river by noon. Um, and when you're getting to the river by noon, you know, you only got four or five hours, but that's all you need in the winter. You know, you don't want to stay out there. You're not staying out there for eight or nine hours to fish like the summertime, you know, shorter days, um, lower light. So yeah, that's what's nice about, you know, winter. You can get some errands done in the morning and then go fish in the afternoon once it warms up a bit. Don't take the winter off. I, it's one of my favorite times to fish. You know, definitely just less people. Even in the winter, you can get great dry fly hatches. You can get great midge hatches. Um, you know, you just gotta kind of time it on the right day. But just getting out with buddies, and you know, it's nice to be out here. You know, enjoying enjoying the outdoors. Potentially see some fish in the mid water column, kind of moving around. So I might switch to a little bit shorter of a nymph rig. Time to try to keep those flies in front of them. Might be eating emergers. Um, they're probably eating, you know, some sort of emergers and larva. Um, a little bit of both, probably. But yeah, I'm making sure right now that that white indicator is going about the same speed, if not a little bit slower than those air bubbles. So you know you're kind of getting the correct drift. And hopefully it works out like that. Yeah, I mean, in the winter, you know, when I'm thinking about flies going up to the river, um, I really just try to keep it as simple as possible, you know. There's not that many bugs hatching, so, you know, don't overthink it. Pick something small, pick something maybe a little bit flashy, maybe, you know, one flashy one, one dull one. Um, midges and small betas really is the bread and butter. Um, you know, there are stone flies um, in the rivers. You know, they're not as prevalent in the winter, but that's going to be a great attractor. Um, but yeah, no, basically just keeping it simple. As simple as possible and you'll have a better time. You don't want to be retying flies every, you know, every 30 minutes trying to guess. A couple midges, a couple betas, you know, if they don't work, maybe try a different couple midges, a couple betas. But, you know, just keep it as simple as possible and you'll have a better day on the water. You get a little chilly in the winter, it's no problem. Sit on the bank, take a couple minutes. Heckle your buddy, you know, have a beer, whatever keeps you a little bit warmer, and you know, just enjoy the time out there, you know. It's really not about catching a ton of fish or catching a bunch of big fish um, in the winter. It's more about just getting out there and enjoying outside and, you know, getting away from kind of the hectic, hecticness of life that some people are having, that's for sure. So in the winter time, we're pretty much strictly stuck to tailwaters and some some freestone rivers below tailwaters the big th thing there is those freestone rivers they will get more ice flow than true tailwaters that two three miles underneath tailwaters usually stays open you may get some ice flows if it's just super cold in the negative but for the most part if you're looking at a tailwater dam flow release um, not a top flow dam release you're gonna get open water year-round through those spots You catch a 40 degree day after a, a cold front. Well, that's when they'll usually pop off and then you get any cloudy days in the 40s here, you get really good blooming hatches. But I've seen midges pop off here at these temperatures too. The good clusters just going down the river frozen. You poor things, had no chance. <laughs> midges wings lay flat down on their back a blue wings wings stand up like a sailboat sail. That's the easiest way to tell them apart right on the water. When they're flying, it's usually the size difference. If you can barely see it, it's a mig. <laughs> bug, 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 bug. Little bug, little bug. I tend to, in the wintertime, at least have three different colors on. Black, olive, and red. Between those three, you usually going to find something that they're going to pick up. They're going to key in on a color. If you're feeling confident in your drifts and where your where your flies are landing and what you're using and you're confident there's fish there, change your bugs. Usually I run real, you know, make sure I'm ticking along bottom with my weights, uh, with my bugs, making sure that indicator having some sort of movement on it. 
then I'll start adjusting depth before I really adjust weight. It's just a matter of getting that depth right. Because the fish are going to sit off the bottom. Rarely are they sitting suspended in the winter. They're sitting suspended in the winter. There's a good mid hatch coming off or a blue wing hatch. There's only so much water that's open in the winter time and a lot of people are out and about. And I'd say, you know, you got to be a little bit more subtle than the average Joe. Most, most of your guys that are starting out, they're definitely going to throw bigger uh, colored indicators. Try to stay subtle. As long as you can see it, go for it. I'm a firm believer it's all in being more subtle than the guy before you. In the wintertime, it can be super subtle as much as bobber just stalling for a second. I mean, always set the hook. Hook sets are free. You know, even on cold days like this, it's nice to get out in saltude and, you know, really just enjoy the water and kind of the peacefulness of winter fishing. Um, you know, even if you're not catching a million fish on chubby Chernobyls or whatever, it's still good to get out here. Yeah, yeah, keep your flies wet. Do not try to keep your hands wet. I don't recommend that. <laughs>